At Pearlside Church, our mission is simple. Each one, reach one. And this mission isn't just a slogan. It's the fuel behind everything we do. We've seen moments of connection turn into a movement of transformation, driven by a relentless desire to make a difference for Jesus. In the early 1990s, a small group of passionate believers gathered in a humble bank lobby with a shared vision to reach the disconnected, the lost, and the searching. From that small group in a bank lobby to now, a vibrant, multi-generational community that spans the globe, our mission has stayed the same, making disciples, training leaders, reaching campuses, and planting churches locally, nationally, and globally. It's never been just about growth. It's about life change. We're called to, as a church, to be a light, right? Like a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. We're not just here to be in a building, but to reach out and to meet the needs and to share God's love, to let people know that God, God loves them. Thank you, God bless. What makes Pearlside truly unique are the relationships we build through small groups. This is where life change happens, where we don't just come to church, we become the church. It's these small groups that we witness transformation, person by person, heart by heart. When you go in small groups, you can actually process life. It helped me to grow as a man, as a husband, as a dad. Being around, you know, different people at the church is really fun. My, my small group, um, they're the best thing I, I gained from going to ProSight. I love my small group. ProSight Church is not about our seating capacity. It's really about our sending capacity. As part of our Every Nation family of churches, we're committed to planting Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, and socially responsible churches, raising up leaders and campus ministers who will carry the mission forward. 13 years ago, I uh, started our church, Destiny Christian Church, and ProSide was the biggest supporters. We were launched into a new season of fruitfulness. We were launched into a new season of growth. We were launched into a new season of reaching people who didn't know Jesus. You guys have impacted every aspect. Mana Church would not exist if ProSide had not helped plant us. And you know, we at um, Grace Central, we just feel privileged and we want to keep that carry on that vision to reach out to people. Having had been saved here as a young teen, um, immediately this church has embraced my family, me, has taught me about Christ, the importance of salvation, discipled me, mentored me. But what's really cool is within this 30 years, and I'm sure longer, they're gonna continue to do what they have done for me, for many, many other young people and families. I'll never forget the first time I had the honor of preaching at your church. You were maybe two years old, and while your church was small in those days, your faith was strong, your vision was huge, and God has done not only what you envisioned, but way beyond. You guys are known throughout not only your city and the state, but on the mainland, you are known as men and women of integrity. The influence and impact that you guys have all over the world is remarkable. We serve and follow a big God, and so he's given our local church a big mission and a big vision. Our heart is to impact our local communities, but also cities across the world. And this is done through expanding his kingdom and sharing his love through church planting here in Hawaii, across the US and overseas. You folks are not only making a difference in the islands, but you folks are also leaving a legacy. You stood with us in prayer. You got financially got behind us all these years. And the impact that you have made throughout all of Asia has been phenomenal. Thank you so much, ProSide Church from Every Nation Church, Bangla, here in Bangkok, Thailand. From the Ani Maza family here at Every Nation Church, Bangla, in Bangkok, Thailand. From Grace Bangkok Church. Thank you so much for being a part of our journey. Thank you for um, equipping us and believing in us. Sawadika! Sawadika! Congratulations from Every Nation Churches Japan!
Thank you, Pearlside Church from Mana Church out in Kapolei. From Every Nation Church, Las Vegas. From Great Bible Church, Maui. Congratulations on your 30-year milestone. Happy 30 years. Amazing to have been a part of it from the very beginning. Continue to carry on with the vision. We are so excited for you and so grateful to be able to celebrate. Happy 30th anniversary, Prosa. Happy 30 years. Happy 30 years, and here's to the next 30. I pray God will continue to bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you as you continue to preach the gospel and live the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pearlside Church, for 30 years, all of you have been a part of this incredible journey, changing lives, reaching hearts, and building for the future. Thank you for your commitment and for standing with us. We believe the best is yet to come. Here's to the next 30 years and beyond of impacting lives for Jesus. Give God praise this evening. Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor, tell them God is faithful. Turn to your other neighbor, tell them God is good. And we're going to take a moment right now to pray and give God thanks. A moment of gratitude for the 30 years that Pearl Side has been in existence. You know, some of us have been there from the beginning. Some of us, this is your first time. And if you did start with ProSide at the very beginning, I hope you'll continue on into the next 30 years and beyond. If this is just your first time checking out ProSide Church, welcome to something that has greatly impacted my life and many, many others. Because people, leaders of yesterday, came into a moment like this and said yes to following Jesus wherever he would lead them so that people like us could come to know how good God is in our life and share his goodness with people around us. Amen? Can we bow our heads and close our eyes and pray? God, thank you for this journey that we've all personally been on in our own lives as individuals. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for his love, his grace, and mercy. God, thank you that he's given us breath, hope, and life here on this side of eternity and the eternity that is to come. God, we take a moment to have gratitude and thanksgiving for pastors and leaders and members that have gone in 1994 into uncharted territory of planting a church in Pearl City and believing that something amazing could come out of it, just out of simple faithfulness and obedience. 30 years is a very, very long time. And over the course of 30 years, thousands have been deeply, forever impacted here in Hawaii, and we know for a fact around the world. That's your heart for us. God, I pray that you would enlarge our hearts. God, for the things that you want to do today in 2024, the next 30 years that I believe many of us will be a part of, if not all, and even beyond, Lord God, the 30 years to however more that we have here on earth. Lord, may we give you all the praise and glory with every breath that we have, every step that we take, God. We're so, so grateful and thankful. And God, help us to have expectancy, no matter how old or new we are in our faith, for the great things that have yet to be done and completed as we live out your plans and purposes for our lives and for this awesome church called Pearl Sight. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. Let's give God praise. Come on. You know, again, today we are commemorating and celebrating 30 years as a church. Again, welcome to Pearlside. My name is Russell Tolentino. I am one of the pastors here, but beyond that, I'm one of the sons of this house. I've been part of Pearlside for 20 years of my life. 
came in as a freshman in high school all the way to a 35-year-old today. And I can only say time and time again how good God has been uh, in and through my life, but more importantly, how good God has been because of the many pastors and leaders and aunties and uncles and members of this church that have poured into my life and so many of our lives uh, for so many years. So again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And again, it's a little different kind of service because we're going to be commemorating but also celebrating and talking about the very things that God has placed on our heart as a church to continue to live out for the next 30 years and beyond. And I loved watching that video. For me, it was like a throwback, just seeing all of the different pastors and leaders that was really leading the charge for me when I was a youth in our youth ministry. But one of the things that I wanted to mention is, man, did you know that ProSide Church started because Pastor Norman and his wife, Faye, you know, planted a church here in Pro City, but this church that is now 4,000 people on a weekend began in a small group. Everyone say small group. It began in a small group, as a small group, in a bank with people that Pastor Norman felt God call him to reach and share the gospel with. That was the beginning of how this church started. And to me, it just blows my mind because we've gone from 1994 now to 2024, and we've gone from one church that used to meet at an elementary now to where we have seven churches that, or seven congregations that meet on island, as well as one that meets in Tacoma, Washington. We have helped five church plants uh, get started here around the world, as well as three that we've been a part of their journey beginning. And even better than that is we have over 380 small groups. And if you're new to ProSide, you just know that as a church, we value small groups because we know that's where we get to process what God's word is speaking to us from the weekend service, the things that God is speaking to us in our life, and we get to celebrate, we get to journey, we get to stand with one another in that journey of faith that we're, we're all on, but all of that started because of the simple obedience of a just small group of people that started a church out in Pearl City, and here we are 30 years later getting to celebrate and just really experience and embrace how good God is. Can we give God praise one more time? And like I mentioned earlier, if you're part of our church, we hope that you'll continue on. If you're new to our church, we hope that you'll be part of what God is going to continue to do in and through every single one of us. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, I want to kindly ask all of us to stand if you are able to. We're going to be reading together God's word. And by standing, we will honor God's word this evening with our main text to, uh, this, uh, tonight. It's out of John 3, 16 to 17. And kind of framing this passage, I know many of us know it. And a lot of us kind of see all of the things that ProSight does in terms of impacting the campuses, the communities, neighbors, friends, family members, all of that. And we can kind of wonder, why do we do all of those things? It is rooted in the gospel. It is rooted in God's love. And the motivation and desire for all of us is to let God's name be known in and through us. And we've been personally impacted by that love. So John 3.16 to 17, it'll be up on screen and I will read it aloud for us. It goes like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. God, we bless this time. We bless your word. God, help it to impact our lives and to shape and cultivate how we see those around us and the world that you've called us to reach. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. Thank you, everyone. You may have a seat. Um, again, out of reading John 3, 16 to 17, we're going to be highlighting two specific values that we have at ProSide Church. And really, uh, for every single one of us, it's just this call for us to share the gospel, make disciples, and raise leaders in our generation and the next generation, and also to do it locally, nationally, and globally. Those are two things that we saw in the video that, we've, that we just watched. It's things that we talk about a lot as a church. It's things that we'll continue to talk about as a church because it's things that we truly value. So again... God calls his church, that's every single one of us, to share the gospel, make disciples, and raise up leaders. And the first area that we're going to be looking at is in our generation and the next generation. Everyone say our generation. Say next generation. Okay, out of Romans 10, 13 to 15, goes like this. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? At, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And when we talk about good news, what we are talking about is the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he conquered sin and death. He saved us from our sins. And through him, we can have eternal hope and eternal life. 
That is the greatest thing that we have as believers. That is the greatest thing that we get to receive and it is the greatest gift that we get to give others. And we've been sharing this throughout this series, but really every single one of us are here in our relationship with God because someone knew the good news of Jesus Christ, saw where we were in life, and decided to pray, intercede, and believe that we would encounter and embrace and experience the good news of Jesus Christ and receive him as Lord and Savior. Like that is the honest truth. And again, we've shared this, but we can't take this lightly that every single one of us are answered prayers, that we are living, breathing miracles of what God can do when someone like a family member or a friend, a coworker, a classmate, a neighbor, just some stranger that just kind of sees you at the gym or on campus and hears from God that, hey, that person needs to know Jesus. That person needs to know about my love. That person is going through hardships and trials. And what more could happen if you just step out in faith and share the good news of Jesus Christ? Every single one of us are living, breathing miracles of steps of faith and obedience that others took so that we could encounter his love. And that means our lives are deeply appreciative, things that we should look at and be grateful for. You know, a lot of times we can get just so upset because of this and that and that and this, and we can get so unsettled because of the hardships and trials and all that. And all of those things do happen, and those things are true. But the reality is God has given us the gift of Jesus Christ. Therefore, our lives become opportunities for us to learn and grow in our relationship with him because other people saw the hope of Jesus Christ in us, even when we couldn't see it ourselves. You know, here's one of the great things that I've just come to terms with. Like, I would not be able to experience and encounter all of the blessings that I have today. My life isn't perfect, but it's so much better with God than it ever has been. But the reason why was when I was a freshman in high school, kind of shifting into the next generation call, I had a classmate that kept on reaching out to me, saw what I was going through at home, saw what I was going through in school, saw what I was going through in life, see the things that I was trying to like find opportunities to cope in life in. And my friend just kept on inviting me to church, kept on sharing the gospel with me, kept on dealing with my like like telling them, like, oh, I'll come to church, and then like Friday youth service would come and I wouldn't show up. Like That's just who I was, but they were relentless in the pursuit of me coming to know Jesus, and I'm here today because of it. Every single day, not just on like our anniversary or our birthday as a church or whenever it's convenient, every single day we should be grateful and thankful for the lives that we have and the people that saw the life that we could have in Jesus Christ. Amen? Who are those people? When were those moments? that God reached you and touched you. Don't forget those moments. They're foundational. They're formative. They're the reasons why we continue to do what we do in love because it was through love that we get to be where we are today. Amen? Your life is valuable. People saw that. But more importantly than people, God saw your life. He sent his son Jesus, and the rest is history after coming into relationship with him. Amen? So that's our generation. The next thing that we're going to be talking about is the next generation, the importance of us sharing the gospel with those who are to come, our children, students on campus, young people. And we live in a day and age where people want to give up on the next generation. I was, like I mentioned, a next generation student coming into a church like this and witnessing and encountering all of these people, peers, students, classmates, teammates that love God and love people. And more importantly than that, I got to witness a church that saw a broken kid like me and was able to speak destiny over me because of God's word. This is Psalm 78, 4 to 7. Again, this will be up on screen. This is the call to share the gospel and the good news of Jesus for all generations. We will not hide them from their children, but tell the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to tell their children, so that they could set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. This is a call of God's people to keep sharing the gospel for generations to come, so that the generations to come would share the gospel with the generations to come. And here's like this awesome thing about Pearlside, like Pearlside values the next generation. 
We can talk about it, but then you also got to witness and see it for yourself. Like not many churches have this many young people where you have dedicated services for middle school and high school where there's a thriving kids church ministry, where there's a dedicated college and young adult service where young people like me get to lead the teams that oversee the service and the small groups and the different kinds of things we do on the campuses. Like Pastor Norman and the leadership team, again, I've been part of 20 years. The next generation has always been part of the value and the heart of this church, and I've been deeply impacted by it. You know, when Pearlside first started, Pastor Norman had no idea that he would be able to reach or our church would be able to reach young people. Like these are just some of the stories that I heard while I became part of Pearlside. Pastor Norman started this church, and he thought the people that he would be receiving, all of the different leaders and the members that planted Pearl City, they thought they'd be receiving other middle-class families from Pearl City and IAL, Waipahu, and the different areas. But who they got were rough-cut youth from broken homes and broken families that were part of gangs, that were addicted to drugs, that were addicted to alcohol, and were going through all of these hardships and trials to the point where they were getting into fights during youth service. And of course, there was like the students that already had known God that were reaching them, but that was the beginning of our church. Pastor Norman thought it was going to lean one way with the families and the middle class and just who God placed on his heart to reach, but God really showed them, no, I want you to reach the next generation. And that's exactly who first started coming to ProSide. And 30 years later, I'm just so excited to share that we are still in a season of harvest with young people. And when you look at what happens in kids' church, when there's over 250 to 300 youth just kids' church, like people from preschool all the way to about sixth grade, part of our different congregations and sites. When we have a dedicated middle school service where about 30 middle schoolers attend, a high school service where about 150 youth come, and even to a place like this on a Sunday night where you see college students and young adults come to know Jesus, there is nothing more exciting than seeing and being part of a church that believes that the next generation has a great calling and purpose. Can't take that for granted. There's a lot of awesome and amazing churches out there, but not all of the awesome and amazing churches heed the call of reaching the next generation. That's an assignment that God has placed on Pearl Set, and we're going to continue on and on and on and on. Amen? Again, the next area that we're going to be talking about and where we're supposed to share the gospel, make disciples, and raise up leaders, it's locally, nationally, and globally. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 goes like this. Then Jesus came to them, speaking of the disciples, Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And also we're going to be looking out of Acts 1.8. But you will receive power. Everyone say power. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Here's this thing with living in Hawaii sometimes is sometimes we can have a really small mindset of what our lives are supposed to amount to and the kinds of things that God can use us to do because we live in the most isolated part of the world. But the interesting thing about Jesus with his disciples was he was already talking to them. When he ascends into heaven, when he's no longer on this earth, what he tells his disciples is you will be the ones to reach the world. You will be the ones to reach different nations. You will be the ones to share the gospel of those who come from different backgrounds and different cultures that speak different languages. Like, if you really, really think about it, this must have astounded but also freaked out a lot of these disciples because, again, they lived in a world where there was no internet. There was no, like, globes that they knew about. Like, this whole concept of preaching to the world was this new thing to them that they had no understanding of what that would mean. Like airplanes didn't, didn't exist. Vehicles didn't exist. So this idea of them sharing the gospel really was this thing that they stepped out in faith for because Jesus Christ told them to. There was no concept of the world that these disciples had. All they had was the call that Jesus Christ had for them. Go and make disciples of all nations. And again, I'm thankful of being part of a church. We should all be thankful being part of a church where it stretches our view of our lives, that we actually can change the world one life at a time, one person at a time, as we share the gospel, make disciples, as we love God, and as we love people. 
You know, on that video that you saw was a whole bunch of different campus missionaries that came out of Pearlside Church that now live in different countries preaching the gospel. They left with their families, with their kids, with all that they had, knowing that God was calling them to places that they never knew about until God placed that nation on their heart. Jeff and Leanne Aganos, Corey and Sonia Alimaza, they're now part of our churches that are out there in Thailand. Our church in one of our, or one of our churches in Thailand was started by Tarn and Marissa Liu. Tarn was, from, was originally from Waianae, and he was one of those people that came into our church in the very beginnings, broken and hurting, part of a gang, getting into fights, and now he is leading our church out in Thailand. That's powerful and that's amazing. We also have Melody Lagutan. Many of you folks know she's out in Vietnam right now. Matt Bolusan, he's out in Vegas. We have all of these different men and women that were once part of ProSide that are now heeding the call of taking the gospel to different states, different nations, and really around the world. And you ask all of us, like, where does that begin? It starts right where you are, right? Going back to Acts verse 1 8, to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of of the earth. This passage again is very powerful. When Jesus is talking to his disciples and he talks about Jerusalem, he is literally talking about where you are right now, where you live, your neighborhood, where you work, the people you're around. For some of us, that's Pearl City. For some of us, that's Eva Beach. For some of us, it's Milani. For some of us, it's Hawaii Kai. Where you live, that is your Jerusalem that God has called you to share the gospel with. It's your household. It's your working place. It's the people that you come in contact every day. It's your family members. It's your friends. It's your Jerusalem. We all have that space that we're called to reach. And after that, he talks about Judea. Judea is like going to the next space or the next place. That would be like us going to a different city that's a bit farther from where we live or perhaps going to a different state. Not saying that all of us are going to be called to move to different states or different nations, but it's having that mindset of faithfulness and obedience that wherever God calls us to go, we will go in faith knowing that there are people there that he's called us to reach and love with the gospel. It inspires me and it encourages me when people do that because it truly takes steps of faith. When we talk about Samaria, what's interesting about Samaria to the Jews was Samaria was actually people that they did not get along with. There was all of these reasons where the Jews and the, the Samaritans didn't look at each other and say that we can get along because of this or because of that. There was divide amongst them, but Jesus says, break the barrier. Share the gospel even with people that are different from you, people that you have differences with. People that I still sent myself to save. My question is, who are those people in our life that are a little bit hard to love, but God still loves them? And he might use us to reach them. And lastly, to the ends of the earth. And one of the things that I'm most excited for in the next 30 years and beyond of ProSide is just how much more God can allow a humble church that just says yes to wherever he leads us to. What more can we do? Where else can we go? All right, we're in the works of planting a church in Nagoya in Japan. We're, plant, we're about to plant churches in the South Pacific. There's all of these great things happening here in Hawaii, different sites and congregations that we're going to launch. We just recently moved to Kahala. We're starting something in Mililani. We have Nanakuli. We have Evo Beach. Why? Because we all have family members and friends that need to know Jesus that live there. So we're going there. We could all come here where there's AC and really big comfy seats, and those locations may not have the best AC or comfy seats. But there's people that need to know Jesus. And many people are there to this day because they're reaching their family members and friends. Many of us know Sean and Jenny Quilopo. They are leaving next year, early next year, to Tacoma, Washington to help with our site that's out there. They want to build what God is doing in the Pacific Northwest. And again, we're not asking all of us to go, but we're asking all of us to just consider, prayerfully consider, God, who are the people that you're calling us to reach, to love, to share the gospel with, and most importantly, just the faithfulness and obedience to go locally, nationally, globally, in our generation and the next. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and tell them, God's good. God is so good. Okay, with that said, to celebrate all of these things, we're going to have a couple groups come up to share testimonies of how God is just using our church to reach people with the gospel in our generation and the next, as well as locally, nationally, and globally, first up is going to be Edwin Izumigao, who is our youth director. And coming up with him is Jacob and Kyler. Jacob is a junior at Milani High School. Kyler is a junior at IAEA High School. Awesome, guys. All right. 
You guys are juniors, right? You guys got your licenses? You both got licenses? Cool. Take me to Zippy's after. Okay, cool. All right, Edwin. Um, Edwin got saved when he was a sophomore at Pearl City High School? Uh, junior. Midway through my junior year. Junior so and Junior Pearl year is a City good year. School. We both went to Pearl City High School. Chargers? Woo. Yes, there's a few of us. Yes, class of 07 and 2010? 2010, yeah. 2010, all right. Uh, Edwin, you are currently our youth director. Talk to us about your journey, though, coming to know Jesus as a high school junior, and then knowing that somewhere down the line, God called you back to actually pour and lead into the ministry that you got saved in. Yeah, um, it's definitely been a journey. It's not something that I had uh, always planned on doing. Um, you know, I grew up um, kind of knowing a little bit about God and a little bit about Jesus, but not really truly knowing him. I grew up in a, a I would say like half Christian household, half not. And so that left me with like a, a lot of more questions and answers when it came to uh, God. And uh, I also grew up in a broken home though. And so I grew up with just a lot of hurts, um, you know, a lot of identity issues, a lot of just questions about purpose and everything. And um, yeah, everything that I thought would make me feel better, give me purpose, and give me significance in my life, um, really made me feel empty. Um, and, and that all came to a point, especially in high school, because I kind of felt like I achieved everything that the world was telling me to live for and achieve for myself. And that only made me feel worse because I was like, oh man, like I still feel empty. So it made me feel worse, like there were no other options for me. And uh, it was right at that time, one of my friends invited me to Pearlside Church. Um, and uh, if I can be honest, the only reason I said yes was because uh, my parents were really trying to get me to go Sunday mornings, early in the morning with my mom. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, if I go to a Friday night youth service right after practice, then I don't have to worry about going Sunday morning. That's the only reason I said yes. Um, I didn't go with the best heart. And uh, if I could also be honest, one of the only reasons why I said I wanted to go back was because I saw a cute girl over there that I was interested in. Um, but it was so funny because me even going there with the wrong motives or maybe not the right intentions in my heart, like God still used that. And um, just over time, um, all the other like distractions and things like that started to fade away. And I started to realize like, man, there's something real here. There's something real about the way that people treat um, one another. There's something real about just being here. And there's, 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 there's like hope, there's substance, there's, there's purpose here. And uh, yeah, I was just a little curious about like what that is and wanted to learn more and more. Um, yeah, and uh, that started my journey. Um, I had Pastor Key, who was, uh, you guys saw him on the video maybe, so he was uh, my youth pastor at the time, and he was just someone who was just always there for me, always loved on me, always uh, was there to answer the questions, even though when uh, some of my questions were like, to him, probably insignificant, right, talking about like girls and stuff like that, and when am I going to find the right one, and you know, oh, I can't believe she likes somebody else, or whatever, you know, stuff like that, but he was always just someone who was there for me and really demonstrated um, God's love to me, um, as well as um, there are so many other like uncles and aunties that were a part. I can't name all of them, but uh, Pearl Side Church, you know, was just there for me and loved on me at such a pivotal moment. Um, and in terms of like what made me want to go back and you know kind of give back to the next generation, um, it goes back to a quote I think that my mom told me one time. I was going through some uh, a rough season in life, and um, so I was talking to my mom, and I was just like. If God is so real, if God is so loving, then why is he allowing me to go through all of this pain and suffering? Um, and it was so funny because my mom said, well, maybe um, you're going through this so that you can help somebody else out with your experiences one day. And um, me being the, uh, the angsty teenager that I was, I was like, what? That's stupid. That doesn't help me at all. And so I hated that answer. Um, but now that I look back on my life, I was like, man, a lot of what I went through is exactly the thing that I use to, to help other people and to share just the love and the hope that God can give. And so really, that's kind of what brought me forward. Like I said, I never really thought about, you know, going into ministry necessarily. I just wanted to help people that were going through like similar situations that I was going through. Yeah. So the crazy thing is now you're like Pastor Key sowing into the next generation about a lot of significant questions, not insignificant questions, but <laughs> significant questions that they have like relationships, right? And the gospel and the goodness of God. Amen.
Amen. You know, a lot of us may not know that during the COVID pandemic, one of the things that we experienced as a church was a lot of hardships in the Next Generation Ministries. You know, how we mentioned, like, we've always had thriving areas in kids' church and middle school and high school and college and adults. But during the pandemic, because we couldn't get on campus and there's a lot of restrictions, we actually saw a lot of our Next Generation Ministries kind of like fall in terms of just how many students were around and just really emptied out. It was very discouraging. Um, but I remember in 2022, Pastor Billy really led the charge for us again as a staff to pray that once, you know, the restrictions would be lifted on the campuses that we would see a harvest and we would see many more young people come to know Jesus. And it's pretty astounding the kinds of ways that God answers prayers. Um, before we have Jacob and Kyler share a couple things, this was about two years ago when we didn't have a lot of things going on with NextGen. I just want to read us some numbers because, again, small groups is important to us. And let me just read about some of the numbers that are happening on the different middle school and high school campuses that we have in NextGen. Uh, this past week, Mwanalua Middle School had 10 that attended small group. Highlands Intermediate had 22 that attended small group. Punahou School, two weeks ago, they had 20 students attend small group. Kamehameha High School had 35 this past week, a 10 small group, and I can't forget about Milani High School. This past week, they had 26 attend small group. This past week, we also had the highest total of students attend service, 156. Can we give God some praise for that? Like, it's cool. It's absolutely wonderful to see. And one of the students that we wanted to highlight today was Jacob. Uh, Jacob's a junior at Milani High School, plays for the varsity baseball team, Go Trojans. Um, but one of the things that is really special about uh, Jacob was two years ago, we had a youth camp. And at this youth camp, Jacob was the only student from Milani High School that was there. But God placed on his heart to reach the campus. And you're kind of like Edwin, a little bit more on the quiet side. But um, Edwin's very quiet. Uh, but God used you to the point now where there's so many members of your baseball team, classmates, friends, like Milani High School is probably close to like 50 and 60 students that are just either part of our services or have come through small group in church. God placed it on your heart to reach them. Jacob, can you share with us why that you just realized that you need to share the love of God with this campus? Uh, honestly, I don't really know. I just did it because like God was calling me to do it. And yeah. Short and sweet. Um, you can add to Edwin. Come on, Jacob, good stuff. <laughs> I'll elaborate on that. Um, yeah, you know, um, it was so funny because coming out of the summer, um, uh, so like Pastor Russ mentioned, like uh, ministry was hard at that point in time because we wanted to do so much and wanted to help people, but there were like almost no open doors to help people. Um, and Jacob, and uh, as well as the, his Milani small group, actually was kind of like, it was the one small group that kind of like broke the dam, I feel like, that really allowed a lot of this harvest, all these dominoes to start falling into place. But um, it was funny because after the summer, um, you know, just meeting and, and talking with Jacob, and, um, you know, we felt like we wanted to reach this campus. And we were talking, but we were like, okay, well, who do we have? Where can we meet? Um, if you saw the picture, we are actually meeting in um, uh, Milani Town Center Jack in the Box because we wanted to get on campus, but we couldn't get on campus. And, uh, and so we were like, okay, who do, who do we have? He's like, okay, I have a couple of friends. Um, and so going into it, I don't know about Jacob, but, you know, I didn't have the biggest faith for what was going to happen. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to show up. Probably no kids are going to show up. It's going to be me and Jacob, but at least we can, you know, grab some food or whatever and talk about life and stuff. But we started off with, I think, five. Um, and then from there, it was like five, went to the next week, it was like 10. And then the next week, it was like 15 and 20. And at some points, we were over 20. And um, really, it was all just kind of Jacob, I think, stepping out in obedience, but also God kind of uh, rewarding that step of faith because we had kids that were coming in that were like, oh, what are you guys doing here? Like, oh, we're doing small group. You want to like stay? And they would stay and then they would come back the next week, but they would invite friends and they would invite friends. And so, um, like you guys might have noticed, like, I mean, I'm definitely quiet. Jacob's quiet as well. And so you wouldn't expect, right, like the quiet person to be able to lead and to start a campus group where we have over 20, right, coming from the ground up. But I think that just goes to show that one, God is powerful, but two, like, I mean, God can use anybody, really, if you're willing to be obedient. So we can give God some praise for that. 
And Jacob went from Jerusalem, and then he went to Judea, and also kind of Samaria too, because Aiah's a rival to Milani in baseball, I would think. Um, but Kyler goes to Aiah High School. The gospel was shared with you. Jacob's one of your best friends. And now you're wanting to also see the same things that happened at Milani, all these campuses happen at Aiah High School. Why have you been, or how have you been impacted because Jacob's shared God's love with you? Um, I've been impacted because, you know, just Jacob reaching out to me, like, it really helped me to like know that like I'm loved and that I pretty much have everything I need. Awesome. Let's give God some praise for that. Short and sweet number two. Love it. But here's this amazing thing. Like these two, like I was going to say kids. You guys aren't kids. You guys are young men. Like we look at you two and we see the future of our church like straight up. Like every single one of us when we pray and when we leave for you and all of the other next gen uh, members of like our high school and middle school services, we as former high schoolers that came into relationship with Jesus while we were in that age group, we see you guys as the future leaders. And we know there's many, many more of you folks to come. So give everyone a big smile. <laughs> That's Jacob and Kyler, as well as Edwin, our youth director. Thank you, guys. You guys can head off. And also switching on is our recent uh, team that just came back from Japan, our mission team that just came back. We have Vian and Gabe and Anna and Sean and Kez and Alyssa. Please help me welcome them to the stage as well. And we'll be closing up with this team. What's up, guys? We don't have enough seats for all of you, so just three and stand. There you go. All right. So you guys just came back from Yokohama, Vian. Um, can you just share with us, like, why, do you guys, why did you guys go out of your way to raise funds to go to another nation to share the love of God? Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for praying for us. Uh, I know maybe a couple of weeks ago, we left to go to Yokohama, Japan to continue to preach the gospel. Um, the first and foremost, before we went to a nation, we have to realize that the nation uh, that God placed in front of us is our family, our co-workers, and uh, our classmates that are literally right next door. And when I look at our team and looking through like who to invite, uh, I wanted to be able to uh, ask those who had the heart of, their, or of loving their neighbor as themselves. And... I think for us, when we think of, oh, I'll go and make disciples of all nations, I'm just going to go leave, take a backpack and go leave to another country immediately, uh, that's not what God intended for us to do. Like, there is a mission and a harvest field right here uh, at our backyard. And if we don't stand up to be able to um, want to have a burden for that, then going to a nation is, uh, <laughs> like, for us, we needed to reach here before we went out to another nation. And so, um, one, uh, because of God's faithfulness to change our lives, uh, I was saved as a college student. And someone came up to me on the campuses um, at LCC and told me about the gospel. And if it wasn't for just that one person to tell me about the gospel, I wouldn't be here. And uh, I want to be able to give, we wanted to be able to give that same love of Jesus Christ um, not only here locally, but globally. So you may call us crazy to be able to raise funds and to go to another nation, but I'll just tell you that God is faithful and he'll make your craziness actually very simple. So, And we got Anna and Gabe who are going to share some praise reports of what happened in Japan. I think we have a, some photos from their recent mission trip. So God did a lot of amazing things. Anna, you can go first. What was your experience in Japan like sharing the gospel to a whole different country? Um, yeah, it was pretty amazing just to see all that God did um, in and through the students. And just some praise reports is this was my second time, and I connected with a student last year. Her name was Hiragi, and I met her again this time. And um, although she's not saved yet, God really moved in her heart. And I think it's through the Hawaii team and just me being a friend to her and loving her um, that she really felt God's love through us. And she went to service for the first time, and she actually didn't sit through the whole service, only the worship, because she had to go to work, but she wanted to stay. And now that, even though we're gone, like, she still um, wants to go to service and is interested in church and just learning more about God. And, yeah, and I really felt that um, she felt God's love through us and just me being consistent in her life and caring for her. And, yeah. So she attended her first service yesterday. 
Is um, that correct? Or today, basically while Sunday While we were there, so last week. Nice. Yeah. Can you grab some praise for that? And then Gabe, you got a pretty good testimony too. Praise report. Close us out. Hello. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest praise report was being able to reconnect with this student named Koki. Um, yes, we have pictures. Uh, if you look right here to my right, um, that's when we met him, or that's when I met him two years ago when I first went. Just like Anna, this was my second time going to Japan. And uh, yeah, I met him on one of our campuses, and uh, it was just weird because my way of thinking going into the trip at the time was, uh, you know, oh, we get to go to Japan, we get to experience the culture there, but I, I guess I didn't really know that God was going to put people in my life that I had no idea my heart would just break for, and uh, Koki was just one of them. And um, yeah, we had a great time uh, just getting to know each other, and the team kind of jokes around, they joke around a lot about this, but they say that Koki reminds them of me <laughs> because he's just so funny and, and witty and, and handsome <laughs> and smart and, and all these things, you know? And uh, back in 2022, it was, it was really hard because, uh, you know, he, he wasn't a Christian, but all I could do and God gave me the opportunity to just pray for him, you know, uh, pray for him. And uh, I also told him back then, you know, Koki, uh, you may not know or you may not accept Jesus or you may not know who God is right now. But just know that I love you and he loves you more. So getting to leave him with that thought and as well as the next teams the following year in 2023, just spend time with him. You could already tell that seeds were planted with Koki. And um, coming up to this trip, I just felt that the Lord told me to, uh, to say, you know, go, go and help save him this trip. And uh, coming up to that second picture right there, uh, that was the night after our second service where Koki accepted Jesus into his life. So our heart is that this would truly encourage every single one of us that we can celebrate the good things that God did in the last 30 years. But just having these two sets of testimonies is proof to every single one of us that God is still doing great things. And there's even greater things that he wants every single one of us to step into for the next 30 years and beyond. Amen. Amen. How many uh, give thanks to our awesome Yokohama team? <laughs> thanks, guys. All right, and as we bring things to a close this evening, uh, we just wanted to share this awesome story and testimony that happened at Pearlside in the very, very, very beginning. And it's really proof that God can use every single one of us to do extraordinary things as we step out in faith and obedience. This is a testimony of Pastor Camille Omo. Many of us know her. She's an awesome woman of God, has been every single one of our, like, awesome aunties that have encouraged every single one of us when we were in youth. But when she first came to Pearlside, she actually prayed because God said that someone that was dead was not supposed to be dead, and she prayed him back to life. It's a really powerful story, and this was kind of the kind of faith and obedience that God called every single one of us to have in the very beginning. Take a look up on screen, and then after that, we'll close up with some worship and prayer. It was one day at the hospital and I was downstairs in the emergency room and we were discharging a patient. And at that time we had a cold 500 over the intercom throughout the hospital. And then I thought to myself, oh, okay, somebody's gonna cold, which means the heart has stopped. Then I heard this, in, this voice say, it's not his time. This voice came from nowhere. Then I ran upstairs and I went to the nurse and I said, where is this guy? He goes, he coded and he, he passed and I said, just give me five minutes, five minutes. And I, I really believe that I, he's not dead. So anyway, I went in, closed the curtain, and I've never met this man before. So I said, okay, um, Mr. Noni, I don't know you, you don't know me, but God said you're not dead. And I spoke to this body and I started to say, every scripture that I memorized to this person in Jesus' name, and I said to myself, okay, God, what else is this gonna do? I'm praying this man through and nothing's happening. So Anna comes and she said, the family's outside, they need to come in and view the body. And I said, all right. And I went down to my room and I started to just pray, pray, pray. 
because God, you said he's not dead. And I just walked back and forth and I kept praying and pressing in. It says, God, you said he's not dead. I'm praying for him to come alive. This is past an hour already. And my boss comes in, she says, you need to go up to ICU. So I ran up to ICU, I went to Anna. I said, Anna, what happened? She goes, come here, you're not gonna believe this. He's not dead. And I looked at her and I said, I told you so, I told you so. So I went to the curtain in his room and I peered in and he was sitting up with his family. And I cried and um, I thanked God and I just prayed in Thanksgiving. I went on my knees, I remember crying. I said, thank you, God, thank you, God. And what touched me the most was that I'm just an ordinary person working in, in a hospital that God would choose somebody as ordinary as me to do something super ordinary. And I was so humbled by it. And I remember when I went to visit him and I said, hi, Mr. Ononi, um, you don't know me, I don't know you. She says, yes, I know you. He said, you prayed for me while I was dead. And I said, I did. And that's how I got to know him. So he came to our church, the people are the, um, at the Cook and Medical Center. Um, some of them were saved because of this to this very day, some of them are in our church. Uh, I'm just so thankful that he got to use me to do such a miraculous thing. And it took a lot of faith and a lot of prayer, but most of all, not to give up. Miracles happen to those who believe. So nothing's impossible. Nothing, raising the dead is not impossible. Healing the sick is not impossible because if he can use me, he can use you. Oh man. Pastor Camille shared this in the morning. She was live. I was hoping that she could make it this evening. Maybe next time. But what's powerful about this story was Pastor Camille just took steps of faith to love God and love others and just do what God placed on her heart. This man's not dead. Pray that he'll come back to life. And sure enough, he did. It was a medical miracle. No question about it. That's what happens when we step out in faith. Who are the people? Where are the places? What are the things? that God has placed in every single one of our hearts to do. Because as great as these stories were in the past, God still wants to unleash miracle signs and wonders today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen? Last point in our notes. God's love will always be the reason we do what we do. Let me say that one more time. God's love will always be the reason we do what we do. Before our uh, worship team comes up, I want to share this with you folks. My wife and I recently moved, or about a year ago, we moved out of, or we moved deeper into Evo Beach from already being deep into Evo Beach. It's crazy. Evo Beach is really deep. But I found one of these books. It's a composition book. And like I was sharing, I was a really broken kid. And I have books upon books of how angry and sad and depressed and broken I was, I kid you not, just books upon books. And I stumbled upon this one, and there's like three pages, and I'm not gonna flash it because there's a lot of bad words <laughs> in this book. It was just because where I was at. But there was just like three pages filled out, front, back, and one more page. The reason why this is significant was I looked at the date. The date on this was 10-24-2004. Say it again. 10-24-2004. And I could not find any more books after that date with entries of how mad, upset, and depressed I was. And I was wondering why. And recently it hit me. This was around the time, one, where I hit rock bottom during the holidays of that year. But this was also when my friend that kept on sharing the gospel with me, kept on sharing God's love from pretty much this date until I first came in February of 2005. And the reason why I don't have any more books was that this was the last entry in a book that I wrote before I came to know Jesus for myself. And all of the rest is blank because I had nothing bad left to write because of all of the goodness that God began to reveal in me. 
And you know what's crazy? The date on my last entry, Vian can verify, we were looking at it. 10-24-2004, the first day of ProSide when we launched in 1994 was October 23. It's not the exact date. I was hoping it would be, but it wasn't. But this book reminds me that when God calls your past to be the past, all of the rest of the pages are unwritten because he has good things he wants to write. And I don't know where we all are tonight, but I know that what God started before, he will continue to completion. And when he completes things, and even in the process of completion, it is good and it is a reminder to us that we still have a great plan and purpose for our lives while we have breath. Amen. With all heads bowed and eyes closed. I want to read us Titus 3, 3 to 8. Our worship team will come on. With all focus on the word of God as we bring things to a close this evening. Titus 3, 3 to 8. I pray that all of us would be reminded of where we were and how faithful and good God has been. At one time, you were too foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We live in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we must become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. All I want to stress to you are these things, so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good? These things are excellent and beneficial for everyone. Lord, as we go back into this time of worship, I pray that we would be reminded of how good you are. Yes, we thank you for the 30 years of this church and the many lives that have been impacted. But more than that, Lord, we thank you for what you did for us, sending your son Jesus, meeting us where we were and not leaving us there but taking us in the journey of faith to where you've called us to be. God, we take this passage very seriously, Lord. Before you, we were left in our sin, but you met us, you saved us, you redeemed us, and how we live should be in response so that others may know how good you are. In Jesus' name.